try and, you know, ban out the Akali of 3Z as it caused so many issues for you during the game? Or do you try and keep things the same as the sides are actually going to remain blue side HKA? Brajaya on red is to get into draft. In this particular series, um, there has been a lot of um, loose priority over towards either the Senna, maybe the Varus, um, in comparison to the, re the rest of the series where a lot will default back to like the Misfortune. But now Brajaya decides to not let the Senna slip, and this time around, um, gonna deny that, um, as they did play that, or rather HK did play that earlier. Did play it earlier, now let's see though they plan on doing here is as we see it's going to be the Rek'Sai Zoe set so pretty much what we saw in the previous game as far as bans go the Senna not being available here for Rujaya as well as the Aphelios and also getting rid of the Bard I'm not 100% oh. certain on that one don't show the damn yeah. Soraka that makes a little bit more sense but there's also options like the Misfortune if they really wanted to go for it. and that's been usually a higher priority for Eminem get the Ezreal. For me, I really love seeing K2 on the Ezreal. Not sure if they want to pick this out early or else they might possibly risk of that getting banned out for later unless K2 decides to pick up something else. Now for Berjaya, no Rek'Sai this time around. Do you want to get those other strong level 3s? Maybe we, we get to see the, the Lee Sin back again or perhaps maybe the Jarvan getting taken away uh, away from Holo. See now as the Varus does get locked in for K2 once again. Enzo, maybe he wants to try and change up a little bit of the play style. Go with the Gragas, and then it's going to be a rather big pick composition. Huh. But no, they go back into the Trundle. Well, um, we'll have to see as this will be his second attempt. And it seems to me there's not a lot of changes into the composition so far um, based on what we're seeing as... I wonder if this is going to be a lock-in either towards 3Z or towards Jimian. There has been a lot of mind games when it comes to the draft for HK. Meanwhile, for Berjaya Dragons, it has been standard so far. But this is do or die. If Berjaya doesn't win this one, they are out of the tournament. All right, but let's see. We got a bit of specialty coming out here, possibly from Hong Kong Attitude. Is It'd be the hot pot combo into the Misfortune Ultimate, but nope. <gasps> Looks like they want to do that last second decision on back toward the Azir here for Jimian as it does get locked in. Remember, Jimian on the Azir here has won a lot of games for the side of, uh, of HKA. It has been picked twice, but it has won twice. And in the meantime, though, we did mention that the problem was that engage. If they locked in this Thresh, was is unfortunately they're still choosing between either the Kench for that safety um, and at least it will solve the problem of that uh, heavy engage. All right, now we got the Thresh getting locked in on the side of Berjaya. Where do they wish to go here when it comes to the rest of the picks and bans? Gonna be a Nautilus ban actually, trying to prevent that being picked into the Thresh of the side of HK. Do they want to go ahead and try and get rid of? Do you want to try and lock down maybe Ozzy's champ pool? His top is still open. Do you want to try and target towards Binji once again? Maybe try and get rid of the Syndra. It was okay for its performance in game one. LeBlanc is open though. Um, if ever Berjaya decides to take that up uh, for Minji in particular for the Dragons. Um, well, uh, Minji actually hasn't played LeBlanc just yet in the entirety of the split. And it's due to the fact that at that time, LeBlanc is almost instantly banned. So they do want to make this either snowball. Perhaps LeBlanc would be the choice for the Dragons as it is still open so far. All right, so there we go. It's going to be Tarek getting banned out here by Berjaya for their final ban. HKA going to go ahead and get rid of the Aatrox as well. So for Berjaya now, are they the ones that are going to try and take away this Akali and let Minji play it or possibly Ozzy in the top lane? Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen Ozzy on the Akali pick um, just yet. It has been... Um, a lot of these utility or tanky or the bruisers most likely and I think something similar that he has picked up before is the Silas at top side so perhaps that could be another flex we will find out as we are going to see the last pickup 
All right, I hope you guys are ready for a long game from HK. This is screaming. We are waiting 40 minutes until we wish to fight. Looking for that massive bullet time combo with the Cataclysm as well as the Maokai. Meanwhile, Berjaya, this would be a very aggressive composition if it gets locked in. Would mean Minji on a rumble most likely, or they're going to actually try and run that up into the Maokai in top lane for Ozzy as he gets to show one of his new picks. Yeah, it still could go either way for mid or top. We'll see whether where these um, these picks are going to go. As uh, for Minji and Akali, again, it is going to be quite new. As we've seen Minji more of that mage, um, backline mage picks for Minji. Mawan would be the uh, heavy type bruisers here and there. And we've seen Minji's Kiana before, so I am excited to see how this Akali is going to perform. With this Rumble pickup, they do have that really nice control over objectives to just lay down the pain with the Equalizer. Don't have that Jarvan for that hot pot, pot, pot combo, but at least you have that Equalizer just as it is. There's a decent amount of disengage, though, that's available here for HK and the sole fact that you did lock in this Maokai, so you can put down the ultimate through the river and, you know, if HK want to say no to a fight. They have that opportunity. It's going to come down mainly to Minji on this Akali on whether or not he is able to find the targets, able to jump onto this Azir, or able to catch out Eminem on the misfortune. For Vrijaya, it's do or die here. You lose, you're knocked out of playoffs. HK look to try and close out the series as we head on into the Rift. And we've said time and time again that the bane of an Akali is the Emperor's Divide because you dash in and that divide will be reserved for you. We did bring that up at the first game, and we're good. <laughs> we have gone forward in time. That is the power of our uh, production, it seems. <laughs> what? Okay. We have, you know, the epic, you know, drums rolling, everything was awesome, and then, wait a second. Boom. <laughs> we're already into the game. Minions they just wanted to make sure we were ready. As, uh... Looks like we're not going to have any funny business to start things off here on either side of the map. Yeah, and uh, we've seen a couple of cheeky invades before, but again, since it's a do or die, HKA do not want to lose their first win lead in the series for Brujaya. They want to make this count, stay in the competition, take it to game number three. Again, especially with that memory in mind that they managed to 2 0 HKA in a manner that is so dominant to the point that, again, a lot of the casters fully 100% voted for Berjaya to, to win, uh, to predict, when they predicted um, in the, this series in, in general. So now, I mean, it was similar. The composition is similar to what we've seen earlier with this Varus, but with in this Trundle, but with the addition of that Thresh, the reliable engage at least will be in this form. So I'll have to see how, whether or not they're able to execute that, because they can go for engages, but if they're engaging onto, you know, necessarily the wrong target like they did in game one, it won't matter a whole bunch. Hopefully Ozzy can actually at least try and burn up this tree quite a bit in the early game here on this Rumble. is already getting that level two, able to sneak in a quick torpedo, make it two. He's just trying to burn up 3Z early on here. Yeah, nice, nicely done trade, nicely done setup as well, um, considering that Maybe if if if, th if three Z is a little bit advanced towards the lane, and so can have a nice visit. Again, it's kind of hard to lock down that tree um, in the form of just the pillar. So perhaps that equalizer will be a nicely done addition um, when it comes to just slowing down uh, three Z at top side. But you know what? He's not on the Akali anymore. It is definitely you know Jimin and Eminem show this time around. Meanwhile, it's just gonna be. Polo at least getting into the jungle. Mid lane, Minji taking a couple stabs there from the soldiers, just trying to get that push in on the side of Jimmy and trying to deny what he can. Luckily for the Akali, can do a decent amount of wave clear, but actually being shoved off the tower makes it rather difficult, and that's actually going to deny about 10 CS. Hook is going to land, though, from Chili. Very nicely done onto Eminem. Wing, though, puts up the shield, is able to intercept a decent amount of the damage as Eminem also sidestepping away from the piercing arrow. Yeah, but the mind games here with the little bit of dancing shoes coming from Eminem, and as well as um, this misfortune is carrying a cleanse, so that's going to be very, very nice to keep Eminem safe at least with the laning phase. Pair that up with Wing as well, carrying an exhaust. So 
that exhaust is prepared just in case Minji decides to dive. Yeah, having that exhaust available to hopefully try and cut down some of the burst that's going to come out from the Akali. That's the hope here is now Rajaya. Kind of waiting on these level sixes from Ozzy to see whether or not we'll actually try and see any action on its top lane. Enzo's just been trying to power farm and Hollow's been at least able to match him as neither jungle has actually gone back. Now finally Hollow's gonna port back to base to pick up his jungle item. I'm interested to see though, like we just saw, Chili has some good hooks throughout the regular season on his Thresh as well as the Nautilus. As we see possibly Enzo making a way down toward the bot lane, but it's caught out by a ward in the river. Yep, and that could be potentially the first gank we've seen. Again, usually for Burjaya, they're the ones who make the first move, um, especially when they're up against HKA. HKA has managed to adjust uh, throughout the whole PCS, garner some confidence um, a little bit more and are very comfy when during the laning phases now, and uh, that really solidify their win earlier on. Meanwhile, for Burjaya, question is whether or not they managed to get their reset and manage, will manage to make this Akali work because it will be very devastating um, if they're not able to make this pick, particular pick work, considering that was HKA's shining um, champion pickup earlier on. 3C just gonna teleport back into the lane, already starting to sit a bit behind as far as the CS goes. Luckily, it's made up a little bit by the Azir matchup in mid lane. Meanwhile, mid, Wing able to get a tag there onto Minji. Minji, though, able to just stay in the crowd for just long enough to get himself to safety. So unfortunately, they're not able to find anything as Jimian did have level six, but decided not to use the Emperor's Divide. And then be a little bit reserved, most likely trying to keep that first on that um, initial back and perhaps fight for that dragon earlier on, um, as the Infernal Drake is already live. Um, a lot of level sixes are, are are already online for at least the upper portion of the map, but for the bot laners, not just yet. So we'll have to see as K2 moving a little bit forward, just trying to maybe sneak in a little bit of autos and trade against Eminem. Things though, as you saw, Enzo was thinking about heading to back to base, but he's currently stuck onto his Raptors, decides now that probably is He's going to go ahead and try and clear toward the bot side of his jungle. He is being tracked, though, through his jungle. So HK know where this trundle is pathing. We already see maybe some setup starting to take place around the Infernal Drake, if they wish to. A lot of vision actually being laid out here by Hong Kong Attitude, if you take a look at that mini-map. Yeah, a lot of vision on that riverside. So they can immediately detect whether or not Enzo will make an attempt maybe in mid. Um, or maybe perhaps even at bot side make the different path towards that tri brush since it was w riddled with wards uh, earlier but for enzo ganking is gonna get a little bit harder um once level six has already arrived for most of these lanes he's able to at least clear out some of the vision put down by hk hollow is nearby though so he does know this is taking place and lots of things coming out here Ozzy does have his teleport available, and that's kind of the big disparity if they wanted to try and go for this, and I think that is enough to actually force HK to decide not even to try and attempt to contest it, is the fact that they don't have a teleport on this Maokai. He had to use it to get back to lane after being poked out by Ozzy, where the Rumble could obviously use his teleport to come into the fight and lay down an Equalizer. Yeah, and I feel like... Um, the first dragon is fine, um, especially that it was taken in conjunction of, you know, the Rift Herald still not available on the map. So for HKA, can, they can just opt to get that level 6 first and then travel towards topside where Maokai doesn't need to have that teleport advantage to create impact towards this portion of that area. See Eminem and Wing trying to make a quick setup there. Double up gets a small little bit of mount damage, but not a full crit. And all Jimian's gonna go ahead, clear out blue buff, and with the dragon gone, next objective for both of these squads are gonna be looking up toward the Rift Herald as Rajaya already starting to settle themselves into the river. Yeah, I gotta install and deward a couple of vision away from HKA at least as to get that head start, considering they've got the first Drake at least, and now moving over towards this. Rift Herald for HKA, 
Big question is, are they ready? I feel like they're ready already, considering, you know, bullet time may not deal an ex a significant amount of damage just yet, but you have Jimian at least for the soldiers. But for now, based on how they're moving towards the map, they seem to will concede this Rift Herald instead, as Eminem making his way down at bot side to soak up a little bit more, maybe even get one turret late. That's going to be, it looks like, to be the trade here, is Rajai are able to claim that for themselves. And there we go. So Rift Herald in hand, as Rajai just want to try and hard shove possibly this top lane to put some plates on K2 as they do have the multiple members up toward the top side of the map and a double wave starting to stack as pings are coming out. I think that's what the play is going to be as it looks like Enzo is going to go ahead and put down the Rift Herald. Once the minions start getting a little bit closer in range. There we go. Maybe yep. at least try and take that the is first going to be. They're going to try and take at least two turret plates before putting it down. Yeah, and a uh, couple of gold being at least uh, funneled over to these two, and so, and as well as to K2. They have control over this blue side area of HK as well, so any sort of collapse will be spotted out from a mile away, and getting that first brick tower, only one plate as well for Eminem. So this is exchange in this particular portion of the game. Definitely wins, uh, definitely is Berjaya's win. Yeah, they're still going to try and at least get another shove here. As 3Z can't really step too far forward. Now he's actually going to be able to take down Shelly, unfortunately. As, oh, ends up using what he can. K2, though, locks him down immediately. Enzo pops his ultimate. A good pillar, though, is able to contain him over toward the side. And Shelly still got the Whoa. charge off. There you go. It's first blood going on over to K2. Hashtag value. That's what happened there for Berjaya. Managing to get another charge, and as well as eliminating 3Z. Unfortunately, um, he stood too close, wanted to get at least um, auto towards that eye to deny that charge. Um, but yeah, corrupted Chain of Corruptions has man managed to put 3Z on a tight leash and as well as that pillar to stop 3Z from going back home. Unfortunately for him, it doesn't look like... Uh, actually, yeah, he didn't go Sunfire Cape, so I was wondering. I was like, oh, why did Shelly not die? He actually is rushing into his... Uh, I believe that's going to be the Spirit Visage immediately here. So with that, it's going to be now a 2,000 gold lead for Brujaya. In about a minute 15, on to the next dragon. And it feels like they kind of have control of the map so far as HK are still waiting a little while before this team really scales up and can test some of these fights. And at this point, for Brujaya, they will be satisfied, uh, considering, yep, yeah, Bork almost completed already for K2. Next dragon is going to be spawning in a few seconds. HK does have nice vision over that river, um, and they do have control as Berjaya still has not set things up yes, just yet to do ward though. So for HK, um, all ults are available. Actually, bullet time just came back online. All summoners are complete as well. So this could be very scary actually for HK, considering Berjaya got an early um, set of one kill at least on the side of K2. Minji just goes ahead and clears out the control ward in the river. Still see though, Prajaya push into the jungle of HK and lay down a bunch of vision. So I know for sure where Hollow is, and unfortunately this Jarvan is on cleanup duty when it comes to the wards. Rajaya able to also get a good press in the bot lane. But that priority is going to be in their favor, and yeah, second Drake is theirs. For HKA, this is the standard HKA where it's okay to not able to not be able to get early game kills. They're playing for that late game, 5v5 team fights around the 30 to 40 minute mark actually, since that's the source of all their victories so far in the group stages at least. Um, and I guess this is good news still because that's only one kill in the span of 13 minutes on the side of Berjaya Dragons. I think the problem lies on the stacking dragons that Berjai is going to acquire throughout the whole course of this game. So if H, uh, HK is not able to at least try to deny, slow down that dragon soul take, perhaps uh, that will eventually bite them in the back. And immediately that is going to be the bullet time being used here. Only the one minion though remains underneath the towers. Yeah, Ozzy you also want to try and go for that. No bullet time now for Eminem on to the next fight will probably be enough to force them to have to 
think second if they want to try and contest this continually against Berjaya as Ozzy still has his equalizer available and I think the hold is here for HKA. They won't have to worry about being dope. Yep, and uh, even though bullet time was was used, it's actually pretty okay considering that there's no dragon and there's no baron just yet for that threat. Turret plates though will be in favor of Berjaya Dragons with seven versus HKA's four because of that um, Rift Herald take down towards um, top side um, and able to funnel a little bit gold on towards K2 and Enzo. There. Turret plating does fall. So K2 is not able to get any more for himself. Still waiting on his next back where he'll be able to actually pick up his Bork. Same with Eminem. He's just trying to wait, try and clear what he can and try and prevent his tower from going down. It's, it's just continual pushing coming out from K2. And then he'll have his self defense completed on his next back. Yep, that would be the case, uh, especially for Eminem. Again, this is HKA's plan in mind. Meanwhile, for Berjaya Dragons, they will be happy just waiting for the next objective and fight from there, or even maybe um, take a lot of new towers. Considering this inner tower at top side is just so close to falling. And um, with that said, Jimian consumed a teleport, so Berjaya Dragons does have that teleport advantage um, at the moment. Him himself in the mid lane already being here. Ozzy going back, maybe enough time actually for HK if they wanted to, to try and go for this as the equalizer won't be available on the side of Rajaya until he gets himself back within range. So that's going to be about a 10 second, 15 second window here for Hong Kong Attitude if they want to try and get it. And already pings coming out here from Rajaya. They just want to try and do what they can to cut them off when it comes to the escape path. Enzo puts down his ground. Ozzy in range now for the equalizer if he wants to try and use it. 3Z has his ultimate available for a disengage. I is going to turn back toward Berjaya. Equalizer is there, but unfortunately, it's not on the exact target they're probably looking for. The bullet time is going to be there on the side of HKA. Minji gets exhausted immediately. Hollow, though, gets tagged by the Shuriken. Whoa. Cataclysm comes on down, and he's going to get taken out. Now Wing going golden, tries to jump back to his safety, but Chili nice. with a massive hook. His Zier wall is there, but unfortunately, he's already taken down. And there just isn't really much left in the tank here on the side of HKA as Berjaya are able to claim the eye. Beautiful hook coming from Chili, able to restart the fight once more. And even though the equalizer wasn't in the best position, it actually blocked the escape path of HKA, whether or not they should go backwards or maybe go a little bit to the side entrance of that blue buff of theirs. And it just still pretty much did the job right. And as we can see, soldiers hitting on towards the dragons or rather the herald um unfortunately um at this point that the the bullet time is not going to do a significant amount of damage just yet and minji managed to tag away some of the members of hka and they're basically that's a really nice hook as well towards jimian yeah i'm actually shocked jimian decided not to use that azir wall maybe a little bit earlier but unfortunately by the time he had to use it he was already dead his hook landed through so now, second Rift Herald goes in favor of Berjaya. Now a 2,000 gold lead still in their pockets. As now the Ocean Drake is going to be spawning up in about 30 seconds if they want to try and get priority and vision down on the map in that area. And we did see the impact of the bullet time. Unfortunately, I feel like you still need that Infinity Edge to make that really surprise surprising burst at this point of the game and for k2 it still has been managed to be safe throughout the whole entirety of that fight as well um and even having that 250 gold bounty with ginsu's gonna be complete um for the next few minutes i suppose but hka just trying to clear the waves as they have control over this river part of the the map well, hka are gonna try and roam down here I think ideally they're trying to at least prevent the Ocean Drake being taken and maybe try and stall out the soul. Might be one of their plans here. Tag there by wing onto Enzo. Just a little bit of poke damage from the Azir soldiers. Not a bunch else they can do, but meanwhile, top lane, you got Minji that's just going ahead and. 
taken down top lane if they're not careful. That's going to be the second tier tower being charged. And on top of that, Ooh. that's going to be more charges coming on through. Minji just decides, all right, I'm going to go for the teleport. Tower is going to be taken. So is the Drake, though, in favor of HKA. Eminem able to get himself back to safety, but at the cost of Wing's life. And, oh, Jimian's getting wow. played like a fiddle at that point. Unfortunately, nothing that the side of HKA can really do here. Sure, they get themselves a dragon, but they're going to lose so much more. That's a double kill over to K2. That was wild. That was a dash out to dodge the Emperor's Divide of Jimian. And then, just as you mentioned, really play Jimian uh, um, in that dragon pit. Let's take a look at this again. And with this, I was worried because the control ward was not cleared at all. Minji had two options to teleport, either inside the dragon pit or over there by that edge of that river. Decided to play safe. Cataclysm, um, unfortunately, Hollow had to die. And that was the outplay that was done um, by Minji there on the Akali. And again, I did mention that Emperor's Divide is so good when you want to deny a dive away from Minji. Unfortunately, it was a little bit telegraphed. So Minji is able to dodge that one. And with that, it's now a 6,000 gold lead for Brajaya before we get 20 minutes on the map. And oh boy, this now gets really difficult here for HK to try and solve this game out. Especially the fact that Minji has been able to play as well as he has been on this Akali to get onto the, pri to the necessary targets. That even if we get into the late game, HK are always a bit disjointed when it comes to their team fights. That it doesn't really matter if you scale up, if you all have different priorities during your fight. Yeah, and we've seen how much an Akali can able to snowball in every single objective, especially that um, dragons will be that favored fighting spot for Berjaya dragons right now. And for HKA, it's kind of difficult to try and slow down the bleed, especially if um, more objectives are piling in favor of Berjaya. And it, at some point, they have to fight around probably Dragon Soul or maybe even perhaps Dragon. I mean, Baron. Well, it's going to be three minutes on the Ocean Drake before that spawns up. So HK have a little bit of leeway when it comes to at least trying to farm back up and we're going to try and equal out this lead. If K2 gets caught out, oh. that might be an issue as Wing very aggressive on the... Braum ultimate does at least force a flash out of K2, so not the end of the world. Get something out of it at least. K2 a little bit far forward from earlier, so that flash will not be available in the next few minutes. So do you like HKA? A few seconds rather. So for HKA, we'll be happy to take that one as a small victory to enable them to if they see an opportunity, then that's the time for that go signal. Maybe make a pick here and there as feel like that could be a window of opportunity for sure um, for HK. Just that clear back out. 3Z though, he's got to at least care for himself a little bit. Jimian at least trying to get a little bit of gold on the map as he's able to get the split push going on the Azir. But still, Rajai are able to push on in. Four members down in this bot lane. No minions though, so they can't really do much else. They'll have to back off. Rajaya Dragons have complete control over... Wow, no one is responding towards this push, and it's an Azir. He is going to shred throughout these towers. All right, so Jimian oh. gets himself some gold. Not too bad. Rajaya a little bit late to the call, and doesn't really look like they're going to have to have an answer for it. Not end of the world, though. It's still about a 4,500 gold lead in their favor. So for Jimian, that at least gets him some gold back onto the Azir. He's going to continue clearing out waves. Does have the teleport, so he's going to act pretty much as a split pusher, though he's got to be careful because at any point, Minji could try and match him, and that Akali will be able to kill that Azir pretty quick. Yeah, true. Considering Minji is about to have his teleport up, and there's not a lot of vision covered at the top side portion of that map for Jimian to keep split, split pushing. Now, for HKA, their next move is most likely at bot side, and they want to time it perfectly for that wave for the next dragon to spawn. Again, did you want to try and slow down at least Berjaya's dragon soul? Um, but at the same time, we'll see whether or not they're able to fight as Eminem already actually has his Infinity Edge. Yeah, so you got the second item now finally for the Misfortune. So that extra bit of crit chance will help out for the damage output on the ultimate. See though, Berjaya 
Not afraid to stop. And oh, that's a blind face check coming out from Hollow. But actually, Chili's the one that might be caught out here. That's going to be the ultimate coming through. He's going to get stunned up. And unfortunately, there's just nothing they could do. And they get caught in the Cataclysm Whoa. into the bullet time. And there you go, Jimmy in over the side. What? But in comes the Equalizer from Ozzy. And he's able to burn them down. Minji on top of Jimmy and able to find his target. And back in the fight he goes. But Verzaya have already lost the crucial members. And like that, Hong Kong Attitude are finally able to find the fight they're looking for. What a wild fight! You saw that engage coming from Chili, able to get a hawk towards Hollow. Unfortunately, you saw him get that lantern out, but no one joined him because they were in a tight spot. And that Cataclysm from Hollow was just beautiful. It set up for a nice bullet time, the Equalizer, and an Empress Divide. It was just such utter chaos, but in favor of HKA. Absolutely perfect. On top of that, they're going to go ahead and pick up the Ocean Drake as it starts things off. Chili's like, come on, guys, I need some help. Has Flash available, but he just never have a chance to use it. And K2's Flash earlier Ooh. at mid really bit him in the back. And with that combo, that is the most perfect hot pot combo I've ever seen. And you top it with the soldiers from Jimian here on the Azir. And unfortunately, with Minji unable to make it work as a lot of the members have already fallen in the dragon side. And with that, that's a nice boost in gold where HKA are actually now within only a thousand of Berjaya. And you start to see the optimal team fight scenario and it was perfect timing too. Once you get that second crit item onto Eminem, his bullet time is gonna be able to do decent chunks. Uh, and if they're able to get another good Cataclysm, if they're able to fight in those choke points, it's gonna look very good for the future here of HK of is they've been able to stabilize the bleed. And now making it two dragon apiece. Nice. Oh, wow, that's a oh. lot being used here. They're actually able to catch out wing as Eminem is stuck on top of the equalizer. So a nice job there coming out from Brajire. They're able to find a pick as well as the tower. And this time around, you know, it's not a uh, Maokai, you are already ready with your Shred on the auto, on hit build for K2. And now they're knocking on towards this Baron. Uh, 19 seconds on the clock, more or less. They don't have the bullet time available from the Misfortune. Now the pings are going to come out here, and they get on top of Hollow. Unfortunately, that's a decent amount of damage. Jimmy's actually able to take down the Rumble. In comes the Maokai ultimate as well. Not end of the world here for HK. They do lose out their jungle, but it is enough to force Enzo to have to back off, and Brajaya are not comfortable to continue going for the Baron. This is such a back and forth game, um, considering that earlier it was Brajaya having full control. Um, Hollow, though, gets another Hulk coming from Chile, and uh, unfortunately, Hollow had to fall from that, but at the same time, Jimian gets a return kill at least towards Ozzy at topside. So Jimian's going to go back into his split push priorities. Eminem's also going to pick up his Hex Drinker. So he has a little bit of MR when it comes to this flanking Akali. Don't know how much he'll be able to do, but hopefully it gives him a little bit of safety with the lifeline. Uh, one big thing, though, is K2 has started to come online. He's got himself his three items now working toward his fourth. Uh, with the Runan. So if this Varus is able to survive, uh, he'll be able to shred it down the front line very easily on the side of HK, as well as we've seen him actually have a couple of good Chain of Corruption ultimates to catch out members. And it's a good combo when mixed with the Equalizer doing choke points. Yep, exactly. And um, from earlier, I mean, they tried to invest so much on the Maokai, but it's only because the Maokai was extra tanky because it was paired with Senna. And therefore, you know, items come easy for a funnel in towards the Amalkai at the early stages of the game. But now it's a Braum this time. No, 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 it's not going to take the CS away from Eminem. Um, and therefore, it is definitely a squishier support this time around. So if they see the opportunity, they can just chain of corruptions in anyone they see. Because um, as we can see in the composition of HKA, everyone is pretty much squishy except for 3Z. And eventually, you get shredded down by this on-hit um, build coming from K2. And you can see for Vrzhaya, they're trying to do a Baron bait. They're trying to see whether or not they can catch HKA trying to go for a check. But HKA, they don't even have any vision down into the river. They only had the one blue trinket that was just used onto the Baron. 
Oh, Enzo. Oh, I think Minji just got spotted out here, so they realize something is up in that brush. As unfortunately for Virjaya, HK are not going to blind check it. 40 seconds on the clock, though, for the next Ocean Dragon to spawn. Uh, they have two dragon apiece, so no pressure yet on who's going to get that dragon soul, unfortunately, though, um, for HKA. They managed to reset early, go back to base early, so they're in this lane first, this portion of the map first, as Virginia Dragons has just come from base. Meanwhile, we got 3Z trying to push up, trying to get some vision down. 15 seconds on Ocean Drake, so that would be the third one of the game for HKA, and they'd be looking at possibly Soul afterwards. I doubt that they're going to actually try and go for anything because it really requires Virjaya to be the ones that misplay and let them come in to these choke points. But here we go. Eminem already on top of that, and that's the pillar already used. So for Eminem, there's nothing that's going to be able to really interrupt his bullet time if they decide to pull the trigger. Ooh. Virjaya are actually on the wrong side of the map now. Both teams trying to at least get back to their safety. But at some point here, you guys have to fight. Somebody's got to pull the trigger on one of these teams. Or else they're just going to lose out here via the mid lane as Chain of Corruption is going to be used. The hook is there onto 3Z. That's a lot burned onto an Akali on onto the back line. Minji, though, able to find a Ooh. target, but he only got the Braum. And HK, they can start the fight if they wish to. The Azir is still alive and kicking at this point. Mint Eminem trying to kite back as much as he can. Enzo tries to at least equal out the team fight, but it isn't enough. And Chili goes down the ace for Hong Kong attitude. This is wild. It's going to be an ace. It's going to be Eminem still alive and kicking. And that's going to be enough for them to just push towards this inner tower in mid lane. And that's a lot of death timers too. So they can squeeze out some more structures away from Berjaya. They were both at the wrong side of the map as it was Chili that initiated with that hook. And unfortunately, that was 3Z. Beautiful Emperor's Divide. Minji jumps back in. But because of that wall, they were the rest of the dragons are pretty much zoned out with Minji being all alone. And Eminem still alive at this point of this match. And unfortunately there, I have to ask the question, what's the point of trying to go in onto a Maokai? This is exactly what we saw in the previous game with Berjaya. You know, just throwing everything at a Maokai. And then expecting the team fight to go their way. And unfortunately now, that's now costed them the inhibitor tower. They did not lose the inhibitor during that replay at least, so they'll take that at least. But now there's the possibility that HKA can always go ahead and start up this final Ocean Drake. And if they get Ocean Soul, that is such a big boost for them when it comes to the region and the later game team fights that uh, for Berjaya in particular, if they're not able to try and, you know, burst down one of these main, main carries, they can't even go for a disengage because HK will be able to just wait out, regen, and then reforce a fight. And that is definitely the scary scenario. That's three Ocean Drakes already on top of the potential Ocean Soul for later. And yeah, they vo focus, Berjaya focused a lot on this Maokai. When it was fine when they really wanted to focus on Wing earlier because he's not as tanky, but he has a Visage, he has a Sunfire Cave, he has a lot of items, he has a Stone Blade in his Acernal. So with that said, for Berjaya, it's good perhaps if he's all alone to try and shred him down. We have so much to worry about on the side of HKA, considering that is, you know, BT already completed for Eminem and Rabadon's too. So these two carries on the side of HKA are just gonna shred through everyone from Urshaya, even through objectives. And speaking of shred, like an Azir can just easily run through this. Uh, obviously you guys have to throw somebody into the pit to at least keep the aggro. Enzo may That's try and fast. go for the steal. You see how fast this is going on down and unfortunately Hollow is there to interrupt everything. That's gonna be Cataclysm being come down. Hollow has to flash out to safety, but again, the Baron is secure. Bullet time finds two what? members. Ozzy tries to do what he can with the Equalizer, but he's not able to find it. He kills Minji over the wall, but the Akali has to back off. And like that, it's gonna be Chili getting taken down. HK with Baron now through the mid lane. And now they're marching towards the base of Berjaya Dragons with 30 seconds on the clock for Chili to respond, more or less. This is going to be an inhibitor down, and we'll have to see whether or not HKA will want to press that up go button and go for more. Looks like they're going to go for the safe route and just reset and push somewhere else. 
And it just comes down to good vision control. Unfortunately, like, Vrijaya could not really go and head or anything. Even saw Hollow was trying to at least put down his Cataclysm to try and force them to at least try and disengage. But it works out in the end, and that bullet time is just great. Unfortunately, Ozzy's a bit too late to the party to even try and put down the Rumble ultimate. Yeah, and you're right. It's all about that vision. They had no idea where Holo was lurking around. Was he inside the Baron pit? No, he was actually lurking in the shadows, just ready to lay down the Cataclysm, use the Flash to at least trap the rest of the members, and not himself included. There's still two minutes more or less for this Baron buff, so we'll have to see where they decide to focus that on as you know, Virjaya wanting to deny at least that fourth Drake away from HKA. So now, Virjaya starting to maybe try and look for a possible setup here as Enzo is going to be the engage. Uses Pillar very early. Another hook onto 3Z. This Maokai just appears to have the number of Chili. And again, Minji just there. gets denied entrance onto the back line. That's Enzo going to get taken on down. Minji has to use his ultimate to get back to safety. But inside track is there for HKA. And they can actually just look to start stopping the ports or just take their lives at this point. Chili gets taken down. And that is also jungle down on the side of Berjaya. That means it is Ocean Soul readily available here on the side of Hong Kong Attitude. That's going to be Ocean Soul. Now they're going to be looking towards pushing this inner tower at bot side. And they're going to be so happy considering that was, again, a hook towards 3Z. Yes, you have the trundle to soften the tree a little bit, but they're so far ahead for HKA, they're able to shred through Enzo and everybody else. Minji dashes throughout the back line. We did mention that Emperor's Divide will be reserved to push out this assassin and as well as that exhaust to deny any sort of burst whatsoever. And uh, everything is just falling like dominoes on Virgia's side. And you can see it on your live feed in the bottom left corner, it is now them taking two inhibitors of the base of Virgia. And Berjaya, after they were able to 2-0 Hong Kong Attitude during the regular season in the double round robin, now sit at the edge of being eliminated from playoffs as they now have to soak up super minions for the next five minutes. And I love the display of how HKA can completely change their cards when it comes to their strategies. They are usually the type of team that are successful around the 35 to 45 minute markers. And if you do not finish the game around those time, it, it, it goes in favor of HKA. And now you saw how Berjaya banned out the Sazir. They let this through this time around. And now this is, they're basically having to deal with this you know, Rabidon's Void Staff already completed as well for Jimian. And at this point, HK looking towards, you know, topside as their next target. Scuttle's going to be secured for HK. It comes down. Can you actually finish out this game? As unfortunately there for K2, he can't even go Guardian Angel because he's actually had to go into the Executioners, just for the simple fact that there is going to be this Ocean Soul always online for HKA, and these frontline tanks he just can't do anything about, about regen. Yeah, absolutely. And if you, especially that the tree seems to be that big wall that they can't exactly penetrate, so that's the reason why you top it off with a Visage and as well as the innate healing coming from 3Z, so it's just a huge head headache eventually as Right now, they're marching towards little, but little by little towards this top side. Virjaya, not a lot of safety, no stopwatches for K2. There's at least Zonyas for Minji, but for K2, that's uh, they're gonna heavily rely on this virus for that consistent damage dealing in the back line. Well, in comes the siege from Hong Kong Attitude. Piercing Arrow is gonna be used to try and clear out the wave the best they can. Ozzy. At least on cleanup duty when it comes to the mid lane. Bot lane, though, is going to start approaching the base in about 20 seconds. As HKA now can start focusing toward this inhibitor tower, only getting a little chip of damage, even putting down the Azir tower in case of the impending flank from Minji. Good news, though, there will be two juicy targets for HKA to take if they're still not confident in finishing the game. Darren is going to be spawning in a few. Oh, 3Z Whoa. goes for a ride. Minji has to go golden. K2 ends up using his ultimate immediately, trying to go for a disengage, but 
without that stopwatch being available. And Chili, does he get caught out once again? He will be able to at least get himself back to safety. Inhibitor in mid lane, though, is going to crumble. And unfortunately for Brajaya, they have to deal with, again, these minions pouring into their base as that bot lane is now cracking in onto the Nexus Towers. And now Baron's about to spawn. This is going to be round number two for Brajaya to defend as super minions are already building up. K2 wants to step forward. That's going to be 3Z's ultimate coming on through. Wing is able to soak up a decent amount of damage on that. Braum has to flash him back to safety. Nasher goes in favor of the side of HKA. But look at this. That's unfortunately maybe not what HKA want to have happen. 3Z gets taken on down. Midji on the back line. But Jimkin what? is able to again divide the fight. And with that Hong Kong attitude, looking to lock in their berth into the lower bracket finals. And they send Berjaya Dragons home after the Dragons securing 2-0 victories during the round robin against HKA. And right now they have done the unpredictable. And they spit at the face of the analysts as they say 2-0 EZ as they take home the victory and Berjaya are eliminated from the playoffs. Chimians shifting sense to the Emperor's Divide was so clutch because I thought it looked a little bit grim for the side of HK in that particular team fight, but nonetheless, Jimian was untouched, and I am, I am just so so amazed. I I I literally have no words. Yeah, it was so amazing. It cut out the signal. It was that intense. That, yeah. That game. <laughs> I'll give it for Jaya. Oh, that final team fight almost looked like it could go their way. Um, especially the fact that Wing got caught out so early, but Jimian on this Azir is absolutely ridiculous, especially in that last team fight. Whew, I love it. Yeah, that makes it 100% win rate, even though let's just say it's just a th total of three picks in th throughout the entirety of the PCS for Jimian in particular, but it's only because there's still a lot of respect. They managed to still keep banning this Azir, and for the second game, Berjaya had to take a risk of not banning this Azir, as they did ban and remove the Azir in the first game, and now they had to suffer the consequences, and I am incredibly happy for HK, even though let's just say predictions is out the window. I love these unpredictable happenings in the PCS. Yeah, because once again, the team that is considered the heavy favorites, unfortunately, it just does not work out. And we've now seen multiple times where I, I don't know what happened here. This was Berjaya that came in fourth during the regular season. They two owed every single team below them on paper. Mm -hmm. This should have been a quick 2-0 in their favor. But we've now seen that HKA have been able to bloody adapt what they need to when it comes to their play style. And, and I I think it also is a questioning when it comes to the draft there on Berjaya, as well as, you know, maybe letting what's lost be lost. As again, we saw uh, the side of uh, Berjaya, uh, Berjaya trying to save their, their, their thresh nonstop. Yeah, let's take a look at that uh, last fight again, where it was Eminem and Jimmy and just focusing on the Baron. So now that it was secured, okay, let's just focus. Shut down. Yeah, easy oh, focus already? that came out. And then Jimmy. That was beautiful. Yeah, whoo, just goes in, says, not on my turf, boys in the river. And like that, they're able to go ahead and take home the victory. 2-0 over Berjaya as we take a look toward the goal graph. Oh. It looked good for Berjaya. <laughs> it really did. In that mid game, I was thinking, all right, Berjaya, we're going to a game three. We're going to have a really long night. Give me another hour of League of Legends. And it's just the team fight finally came online. And once you lost the Ocean Soul, too, I don't see many options here for Berjaya. Plus the fact that eventually, you know, Trundle eventually falls off. You will be in the middle of the fight, but not a lot of utility except perhaps that pillar and subjugate perhaps to soften up maybe either the Jarvan or the Maokai. Um, unfortunately, again, we did mention the success of HKA comes with these 35 to 45 minute window. If you do not finish the game in time, then that is HKA's game. And unfortunately, that's what happened to Berjaya. They're not able to get ahead to a point where Berge, uh, where HKA can exactly catch up and reach to that point of the game. And your MVP, I don't think that's even a question. It's going to be Jimmy N in the mid lane on the Emperor himself. 100% kill participation 
in their final game against Berjaya, which now locks them in for a berth against AHQ in our lower bracket semifinal. And it's wild to think that HKA was at ninth place um, during the rankings, uh, during the initial parts of the PCS. And they had to fight their way towards that last spot in the PCS with a tiebreaker against Liab. And considering, again, this, this, this team in particular has come a long way. They've managed to gain more confidence. They've managed to move as a unit and actually picked up a few things here and there as managing to catch people off guard when it comes to the early game as well. It seems to me that, that they can also fight fire with fire. Yeah, that's absolutely shocking. Like, no one expected Hong Kong Attitude to take this series. Some of us expected maybe they take one game. But absolutely no one on the talent team in any language, even our guest crow from Resurgence, thought <laughs> it was a 2-0 for Virjaya, or 2-0 or 2-1. This is 